Rich Mountain, the second highest location in the U.S. interior highlands. And where there is a mountain, there is an example of mankind finding ways to overcome it. People from all corners of the United States come to view the impressive terrain that is the Washita Mountain Valley. On the other hand, the rail fans come for the KCS freight trains battling the tough terrain and some of the most scenic rail photography spots in the southern United States. In today's video, we will be following the Shreveport sub southward from Hebner, Oklahoma to Mena, Arkansas, with everything in between, including the grueling fight against the mountain. This is Kansas City Southern, climbing Rich Mountain. With a KCS caboose sitting by the highway and a restaurant named after the iconic Southern Bell passenger service, Hevener, Oklahoma has yet to forget its railroad history. The restaurant, made out of an old passenger car, has a line of sight of the KCS Hevener Yard. This is where we will begin our journey. On the north side of Kansas City Southern's Hevener Yard, MKCSH, a mixed freight originating in Kansas City, is seen rounding the curve just before entering the yard. Once reaching the yard, the Hevener subdivision comes to an end, and the Shreveport subdivision begins. The north side of the yard features a fueling rack. Thanks to the public roads surrounding the facilities, rail fans get a front row seat. A southbound grain is seen easing to a stop to refuel before the tough battle against the mountain. After refueling, the grain advances into the yard where it will halt by the yard office to await a fresh crew to take the reins. Towards the south side of the yard, you'll often find a pair of Jeep locomotives switching. With one in the gray ghost paint scheme, the Jeeps make a shove move back, while our recently refueled southbound sits by the yard office, awaiting its new crew. In the morning hours, we arrive to find the daily MKCSH wrapping up its switching duties. Dispatch gave the clear for the manifest to depart Hevener and make way for Shreveport. The conductor would manually switch the line, would climb on board, and a journey to the mountain would begin. In charge is KCS to Mexico ES44 AC 4755 and one of the Progress Rail Tier 4 SD70s, nicknamed Bananas by rail fans thanks to their bright yellow paint scheme. Here we see a northbound mixed freight with a trio of EMD SD70 ACEs moving into the yard.
Just two miles south of the yard at milepost 340, a solo BNSF locomotive leads a northbound empty coal train towards the Hevener yard. The BNSF coal trains make up a sizable portion of the traffic through the mountain. Multiple run north and south on a daily basis. At the same location, our southbound manifest bound for Shreveport eases through. Near Zoe, Oklahoma at milepost 349, southbounds come around a curve to meet the upward grade. We were told by a veteran rail buff that this is where the trains truly begin to battle Rich Mountain. That seemed evident when the sound of a howling DPU rolled past us. We leap ROG 4755 to Page. The siding here is a very common meet location for north and south bounds. After our southbound passes, we'll stick around and take a look at some other meets that have taken place at this location. Southbound BNSF coal is seen here awaiting a northbound mixed freight from Shreveport to clear. A loaded grain is seen sitting on the main line to allow a northbound coal to proceed into the siding. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to get through the thick shrubbery for a popular S-curve shot, but that just gives us a reason to come back. After crossing the state line into Arkansas, KCS 4175 is seen leading through what is probably one of the most iconic photo angles in the Rich Mountain area. Just a few miles north from the summit in an area called Howard, 
Highway 59 is elevated over the main line and Big Creek runs just alongside the tracks. This spot has been popular since the steam era of KCS. You can even find some old KCS promotional photos in this spot during the days of the famous Southern Bell passenger service. Rich Mountain is part of the original KCS mainline that spanned from Kansas City to Port Arthur, Texas. It all started with a man by the name of Arthur Stilwell. He incorporated the Kansas City Suburban Belt Railroad. This would be the first line to make up today's KCS system. From this, Stilwell would continue to expand his line to the south. In 1897, Stilwell had completed his dream of connecting Kansas City to the Gulf of Mexico. Stillwell was one of the first to construct a major main line that ran north and south instead of the typical east and west. And it turned out to be a huge success. By 1900, the KCPNG was officially the Kansas City Southern. Throughout the years, KCS would expand by purchasing lines such as the LNA, the Mid-South, Gateway Western, and several more. KCS now plays critical roles in cross-border transportation with Mexico, cross-country intermodal, and much more. And all of this began with the single vision of one man. Just about four miles from Rich Mountain at milepost 363, another southbound manifest with a BNSF leader was waiting on the main line for a northbound coal to reach the siding a few miles south. The southbound has just received authority to advance towards control point North Rich Mountain. DPU is KCS 4029. This SD70 ACE was one of the final aces in the Grey Ghost paint scheme. Now only one of 30 Grey Aces remains in paint, but it has since been sold off. 
It currently resides in the St. Louis storage lines with its KCS reporting marks patched over. Closing in on the Rich Mountain siding where 4755 will meet a northbound, we find a hill to climb up to get an elevated view of our KCSM and banana pair. This manifest is too long to fit into the siding, so the rear will stick out onto the main line. Thanks to this, once the incoming northbound is in the siding, 4755 will advance on to Shreveport to allow the northbound out of the siding. At control point North Rich Mountain, our northbound is set in the siding as the DPU clears. This siding is just by the actual summit of Rich Mountain. From here, southbounds have concluded their battles with the grades and can ease off the throttle a little bit as their trains can glide through the downward grades. With the southbound clear, the northbound with the Canadian Pacific locomotive trailing 5th moves out with 4772 leading the charge. Once again we see 4175 and its loaded grain train slowly moving through the Rich Mountain siding. It is negotiating a slight curve with a very nice mountain backdrop. Many of the grain trains on the Shreveport sub have various destinations within Mexico. Similar to the BNSF coal trains, the northbounds are typically empty while the southbounds are loaded. On occasions, the manifests bring in long cuts of empty grain hoppers that will eventually be built into a complete empty grain train in the yard back in Hevener. Moving on from the Rich Mountain siding, we find ourselves set up for KCS 4772 leading its northbound through Eagleton where it will later diverge into the Rich Mountain siding. Eagleton is also among some of the most popular photography spots on the mountain. This is one of the locations where you can see northbounds working hard up to the summit.
Here's 4175 at the Eagleton Curve. As I said before, southbounds have beaten Rich Mountain and can finally increase their speed and glide on the downward grade. Just a few miles north of the Mena city limits, the next location we'll take a look at is Acorn. BNSF 6324 is seen leading a southbound coal through the town. Coming into MENA at milepost 379, a BNSF EMD SD70 ACE comes roaring into town with its southbound loaded coal train. Mena, Arkansas is where we will conclude our journey down Rich Mountain. Mena is commonly known as Barry Seal's drug smuggling base of operations, but the town has an interesting railroad history as well. Mena is one of several towns and cities founded by KCS founder Arthur Stilwell. The KCS depot that went into service in 1896 still stands and serves as a reminder of Mena's history. A southbound loaded grain is seen passing the depot with BNSF leaders.
and this is where we will conclude today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this video production on KCS Battling Rich Mountain, and if you did, be sure to leave a like down below, and maybe even share the video with some friends. As always, thanks for watching.